What is this jihad? Is this fighting? No. This ayah is in Surah Furqan. Do you know where Surah Furqan was revealed? It was revealed in Mecca, in which fighting was not permissible. And so the jihad here, وَجَاهِدْهُمْ bihi With the Qur'an, with the proofs in the Qur'an. And so these were just some of the lessons that we can extract and use for the modern age. And this is the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a miracle in itself. In itself. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The speaker of this session will be Brother Abdul Bari Yahya and he will be addressing the topic of practical lessons from the seerah for the modern age. A bit of a background about our brother Abdul Bari Yahya. He was born in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and later immigrated to the USA with his family. After completing his primary and secondary education there, he began his studies at the Islamic University of Medina in Saudi Arabia. Upon graduating from the Islamic University of Medina's College of Sharia, Abdul Bari Yahya returned to Vietnam and Cambodia and became a teacher and director of the Revival of Islamic Heritage Society in Cambodia and the Umul Qura charity organization in Vietnam. He currently resides in Seattle, USA, along with his family, and is an instructor with the Al Maghrib Institute, an organization that provides trademark double weekend seminars, leading students towards a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies. He is also currently the Imam of Masjid Jami al Muslimin in Seattle. So I would like to invite to the stage. Our beloved brother Abdul Bari Yahya to address the topic of practical lessons from Nasira for the modern age. Brother Abdul Bari Yahya. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة الفتح the first ayah the first verse Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Indeed, we have given you the clear victory. We have given you the clear victory. What victory was this that happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ? Did the companions defeat 
An army? How many soldiers did they capture? What country or what city did they conquer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a clear victory. What is this clear victory? When we look at the asbab and nuzul, the reasons for the revelation of this ayah, this victory is the victory of peace. This victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Fatham Mubina. A clear victory came after the treaty of Al Hudaybiyyah. In the treaty of Hudaybiyyah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed with the Meccans in Quraysh to have an armistice. In other words, peace and no fighting. They had been fighting before this in the battle of Badr, in the battle of Uhud, and also in the following battles that came, and then peace occurred. This peace was called Fatham Mubina. That's why in Islam, the true victory, the clear victory, is the victory of peace in which you avoid confrontation and avoid fight. And this was very beneficial for the Muslims. Because after this, after this agreement or this pact and treaty, there was peace in the Arabian Peninsula. Anyone who wanted to join the Muslims, they can ally themselves with the Muslims. Anyone who did not want to join the Muslims, they could ally themselves with the Meccans. But anyone who allied with one or the other, they had to respect this peace treaty. And because of that, over 1,400 people went to Mecca to perform Umrah. And this was when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah occurred because they could not go into Mecca. The Meccans prevented them from going in, but they gave them provisions to go next year. But during that trip, there were 1,400 people, Muslims, who joined the Prophet ﷺ. In less than two years later, the next trip that they went after the Umrah of the following year, the next trip, the major trip that they went, they had over 10,000 Muslims who went back to Mecca just in less than two years. Why? Because so many people accepted Islam. What does this show? This incident shows that Islam prospers in peace and not in war. Islam prospers in peace. Why? Because more people accepted Islam during the few months after the treaty than over 19 years of da'wah in Mecca and Medina. When there was peace, Islam spread. And this is just one of the lessons that we can take from the seerah or the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the time of Nuh, peace be upon him, the floods swept the entire earth, sparing only those who believed. Today, floods of shirk, floods of innovation, and floods of desires and lust are sweeping the whole earth. Al-Imam Malik ibn Anas of Medina said that the Sunnah is the Ark of Nuh. Whoever boards it is saved.
and whoever refuses is drowned and is doomed forever. Join me in Al Arba'een Al Nawawiyah, the 40 hadith compiled by Al Imam Al Nawawi. Join Asim Al Hakim in Al Arba'een Al Nawawiyah every Tuesday at 11:30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 12:30 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. They are called Ummahat al Mu'minin, the mothers of believers. Yet there are questions. The questions about them that need to be answered. What is missing is the answer. Join me as I try to shed some light and clear doubts about the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Wasallam. Get to know why were they the best women to look up to in Islam? Join Hatham al Haddad in Wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, every Thursday at 11.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 12.30 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik next on Peace TV. During this occasion also, during the time in which the treaty was being agreed upon in the meeting with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Suhail ibn Amr representing the Quraysh in Mecca. During this time, before, right before this, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was prevented from going to Mecca, and first of all, they were not supposed to prevent the Muslims. This was an inalienable right of anyone who wanted to come into Mecca peacefully to make Umrah, the lesser pilgrimage, they were supposed to be allowed to go in freely. But the Meccans, they went against their own tradition and prevented the Muslims from going in. So during this time, one of the reasons why the Meccans wanted peace also was because of war, their economy was in shambles. The trade routes from Mecca to Asham, but they were being impeded because there was no peace. And that's why they also wanted peace. And that's why the Prophet Wasallam, he said, the Meccans, the Quraysh in Mecca, if only they would have allowed me to freely call people to Islam, they would have stood to gain. They would have gained in position and everything else. But they tried to prevent the Prophet ﷺ from doing so and they expelled the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And because of the war and so forth, their economy was in shambles. It reminds us of the time that we are living in right now. In just the few years of the incident of the attacks in Iraq and so forth, the United States of America, they have spent billions and billions of dollars into this war. Recently, just I read an article and they were calculating the amount of money and what you could have done with that money instead of 
making bombs and guns and taking care of the troops and so forth. If they were to use that money to spread peace instead of war, you know what they could have done? You know what America could have done? America could have alleviated poverty from the face of this earth. Not a single poor person on the face of this earth. Instead of using it for war, if they used it for peace, imagine no poor person on the face of this earth and everybody has enough to eat. They could have alleviated poverty from the face of this earth with that same amount of money. And that this is what also happened to the Quraysh because of the war. And so, in the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, there are lessons. And Islam is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the final religion revealed to mankind there will not be another prophet who will be sent to us until the day of judgment with the exception of prophet Isa alayhi salam who will come back and rule by the sharia of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except for Jesus his return but the Quran in the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the legislation will be used and it will be ongoing until the day of judgment. And so the lessons in the seerah and in the Quran are applicable even in our times. Now what are some of the other lessons that we can extract from the seerah of the Prophet وسلم? Let's start from the beginning of Revelation. The Messenger of Allah was in Mecca. In Mecca, there was great oppression. The rich and wealthy, the aristocrats in Mecca, they took advantage of the poor. There was widespread oppression, widespread lewdness, so much so that they even used to make the wav, circumambulate around the Kaaba naked. Not a single clothing on them. Their morals were deteriorated. And so, because of all the oppression, because of all the evils, especially the shirk, the worshiping of idols and so forth in Mecca, a person who is of the fitrah, in other words, a person who is in his natural state towards good, like the Messenger of Allah was, he saw people being oppressed. He saw people being harmed. He saw the rich taking advantage of the poor. And he saw the way the society was. When he was near or around the age of 40, 40 years of age, he started to seclude himself. Why? To reflect upon the society because he wanted to change and do something about it. Naturally, somebody who is of good heart, when they see evil, they naturally want to change. But how? So when the Messenger of Allah was at the age of 40, living in this society, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him the first verses of the first surah that was revealed. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. Khalaqa al-insana min alaqa. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Alladhi allama bil-qalam. عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ These were the first verses revealed to the Prophet The first word in the Qur'an that was revealed was اقرأ Read, recite اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق Read and recite in the name of your Lord who created this word 
caused a revolution in the Arabian Peninsula. The Bedouin Arabs, who were looked down upon as second-class people, they rose from the desert and they became the scholars of the world. Because of Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, read and recite. Education is of utmost importance in Islam. Read and write. And they were an illiterate nation. Education is so important to learn how to read and write that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Muslims captured 70 of the prisoners after the Battle of Badr, when they captured 70 of the prisoners, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed them to ransom themselves. Their families could pay for it. But there were some people who could not afford to pay their ransom to be freed after their capture. So, what happened? The Prophet ﷺ said, if you teach 10 people from the children of Medina or from the Muslims, 10 to learn how to read and write proficiently, to learn how to read, then they would be free. The people in Medina, they were farmers. Many of them did not know how to read. The Meccans, they were merchants and businessmen. So most of them knew how to read. But after this, after this, because you know, if you are captured, if you get to teach 10 people and they know how to read correctly, properly, you get freed, you want them to learn as quickly as possible. You're going to be the best teacher you can be so that this guy will learn quickly. You get 10 people and you get to go home. So. That shows also the importance of reading and writing and education, especially at a time that we're living in when there's trials and tribulations, there are evils in the society, degradation of the society and so forth. You see what happens? Education is very, very important. And that's why the first ayat that was revealed was Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khala. And then, what is the next? Surah that was revealed after that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after you learn how to read, you're right, you educate yourself. What do we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Muddathir, the first few ayats of that surah. Ya ayyuha al-Muddathir, قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ وَلَا تَمْنُنْ تَسْتَكْبِرْ وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya ayyuha al-muddathir O ye who is covered up in your blanket Now the time to sleep is over Get up and warn. Get up and deliver the message. You have to get up and deliver the message. The Prophet ﷺ said, Balli wa anni wa aya. Convey what you have from me, even if it's one verse only. So the next step in a society, especially in a non-Muslim society, most people fail to understand. They don't realize that the Prophet ﷺ for the first 13 years of the da'wah, the first 13 years after revelation, he was living in a non-Muslim society. He was living in a non-Muslim society. So the lessons that you can extract from that period, they are invaluable. They are precious. This is something that we as Muslims, especially those living in India, in the West, in Europe, in Australia, anywhere else where you are a minority, extract the lessons from there. Because the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims, they were living as minorities in a non-Muslim society. So, we as Muslims, if we are living in such a society, we have to convey the message of Allah to others. 
In America, in America, I don't know how it is, if it's similar, probably here. In America, the average American sees over 3,000 ads or adverts a day. Somebody trying to tell you that you need this and you need that. You have to think this way and that way. So you end up buying things you do not need with money you don't have, just like the previous speaker spoke about, to impress people you don't even like. That's what they want you to do. But you know, as Muslims, we don't go into debt. We don't borrow money unless it's an emergency, unless we really need it. We don't borrow to get things we don't even need, to raise our lifestyle. No, you borrow when it's an emergency.